Hey guys, Kyle here. So, just before the show starts, I wanted to mention our Patreon. You can pay us $1 a month as a thank you, as a tip. You can pay $2 a month to get access to one of our bonus content shows, uh, episodes two days early, and a secret Discord chat where all of our Patreon donors get to go and hang out and talk with us directly. Then there's a $5 tier that you can donate to to get access to a whole bunch more content. Uh, we have multiple bonus episodes on there. So please check it out, patreon.com slash it gets weird. Uh, we don't advertise, we don't make money. So check it out and throw some money if you think that would be cool. Thanks. Welcome to It Gets Weird, our comedy show where we explore the unusual, the unbelievable, and the unexplained to try and make your world a little weirder. I'm Kyle. I'm Niall. And this week, we are at the climax. We are horny. We're here. We're horny for UFOs, or in this case, I guess, UFO disinformation, which is a weird thing to be horny for. I'm guessing there is probably... Now, look, there's kinks for everything, but if you're... Is there horniness in the UFO disinformation community or is it too scientific slash would, uh, conspiracy minded? Well, given that our first subject subject is uh, of this final part is going to have to do with uh, cattle mutilation, I would say, yes, definitely. There are people out there who will get off to this this episode. But I just kind of meant generally also like we're at the we're at the final episode. We're finally at the release. We can finally stop edging and we can just fully come now. Um, I, I googled UFO disinformation fetish. Okay, you and, find anything good? Uh, n- no. Oh, it it's it's <laughs> like there's an article about Blink One Eighty Two. Oh, of course, um, of course. And yeah, a lot of stuff about Tom. De- on, honestly, Tom DeLonge comes up a lot about this. Uh, so maybe maybe he's maybe look maybe Blink One Eighty Two is a long con to produce content for Tom DeLonge's UFO disinformation yeah. fetish. That could very well be. The, to the Stars Foundation or whatever yeah. the hell it is. Maybe he, like, the government kind of pulled him aside and it's like, look, dude, we know that you have been just jacking it massively to this idea, but we hate to break it to you. We have we have no evidence that aliens are coming, but if you'd like, we could role play with you a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You know, we can... <laughs> look, when you get to the level of fame and money that, that Tom DeLong has... You can bring your government into your into the yeah, bedroom with you. That's right, uh, and, and role play some real like Men in Black shit. Yeah, you may, I'm assuming that the government is like you get you throw enough money at them, they're willing to help you get there. I think. Yeah, if you help fund some black budget stuff. Yeah, with your oh, with your millions, we really want to develop this thing that we're gonna this fucking you know bomber or whatever that we're gonna sell to Saudi Arabia. But ooh, we could really use some funding. Do you want to do it sexy style about alien disinfo? Yeah, they they, they tried it with Dan Aykroyd in in the nineties oh. when he when he <laughs> thought he was being tailed by M, the Men in Black, but it actually in actuality uh, he <laughs> was not. He did not get sexually aroused from that, so they 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 yeah. they pulled back. Yeah, their their sexual interests did not lie in the same place. They wanted the UFO thing. He wanted Crystal Skull vodka. Anyways, yeah, I, it, 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 for people out there who maybe don't know, Dan Aykroyd's pretty interesting. I've almost done an episode about him. Yeah, there's definitely an episode we could do on Dan Aykroyd's UFO stuff. But I feel like there would be. We could work out some episode stuff on like celebrity UFO and like yeah. alien stuff we, because there's the whole thing about Kurt Russell yeah, seeing was, that's what I was gonna the bring Phoenix up. Lights mm-hmm. and like also maybe the his movie Soldier being a like government project about the Super Soldier program and then there's like Dan Aykroyd with the aliens and stuff and like Kesha is is in well, on a bunch of shit it's if, it's pretty um, wild. What's their name? We watched their show. Demi Lovato? If Demi Lovato is any indication, there's probably a deep well of UFO celebrity stuff to uh, to uh, get into at some point. So I, that would be fun. I would definitely like to talk about that. Yeah, we can. I'll, I'll look, I'll put that on the back burner and see if I can cool. see if I can sort some stuff out. Excellent. Well, Niall, if you'll recall, we have been talking about a shitload of UFO disinfo. Yes. The kind of general idea being that The government is creating, I don't know how else to say it, false flag UFO events. Yeah. Um, Like MKUltra is like 
part of the conspiracy is like maybe MK Ultra was a part of manufacturing UFO sightings and abductions even. Yeah, um, the, the thing, the big reveal at the end of last episode that really got me was just like how much a lot of the things that government, like governments that have, have been looked at as the government trying to cover up UFO stuff is actually them basically creating false flag UFO events that to, to draw out truthers and like just give basically shoot a bunch of like misinformation bullets out into the world to cover up for like secret government, yeah, like secret operations, yeah. maybe technology that they don't want the public to know that they have, especially given that we're in the cold war. We don't want Russia to know what we're working on. And a civilian finds out what you're working on. Well, you're going to maybe try and do something to uh, discount the information coming from that citizen. If they're vocal about it. It's paranoia in the opposite. It like, but the paranoia is, is usually targeted in the wrong direction here. Yeah. It's not that you, the government's covering up UFOs. It's that the government are the UFOs. Bam, let's go. Yeah. Well, where we're starting here is we're we're now up to the 1970s uh, with this this US UFO disinfo stuff, and the 1970s is pretty pretty well known for the uh, cattle mutilation phenomenon. Yes. I, sorry, I just immediately started. As soon as you said we're in the 70s now, Fortunate Son just started playing in my brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, I want that to... There's another song that you could be playing in your brain because um, this is a wave of mutilation in a way. Oh, okay. Um, but but that's a good one to play too. I mean, you could maybe kind of like switch back and forth between the tracks here. Um, yeah. It, <laughs> is wave of mutilation about cattle mutilations? I doubt it, but it could be. so. Is it? No. Okay. I, I oh. very much doubt it. I... Uh, man, keep, keep going. Well, people begin reporting their cattle being killed in, in very strange and often specific ways. So like, we're not talking a predator coming and tearing a cow up. We're not talking about a cat, uh, like, like cattle, like starving to death. It's, it's nothing typical, right? Um, if you know about UFO stuff, you know that typically these are cows that are just like, they just suddenly turn up dead with no real indication that they were like sick or anything. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're just drained of blood. Usually they'll have like organs taken out or just like entire parts of their bodies just cored out often like the anus or the udders. Yeah, I remember the, that being a thing in our, because we, we've watched some like Stardust Ranch documentaries and stuff. Or is that the right one? Uh, there's two that, ranches and I always forget which one's which. There's Stardust and there's um, Skinwalker. Uh, Skinwalker Ranch. With Skinwalker Ranch, I think Skinwalker Ranch had cattle. Okay, then it's that I one. Think. But real quick, I looked up what, what wave of mutilation is about, and the only reason I'm bringing this up is because I would have never guessed this in a million years. Maybe I just don't listen to the lyrics. Okay. Uh, singer Black Francis uh, described the song as about being about Japanese businessmen doing murder-suicides with their families because oh. they failed in business, and they're driving off a pier into the ocean. Oh, my God. So I guess uh, it's it's not about cattle mutilation, <laughs> but it's about some kind of mutilation. Wow. I, did, I, would, I didn't pick up on that either. I'll have to listen to that song yeah, again. Yeah, look, it gives you keep, a new lens on the song, you know? Yeah, I'll have to keep Japanese salaryman suicide murder and cattle mutilation in mind for that. Yeah. Next time I check that song out. Um, so yeah, there's like a weird surgical precision to these these mutilations. It's very strange. Um, and it's a big phenomenon throughout the 70s. Uh, yeah. Now, what do you think that people attributed this to beyond just UFOs? Like, what do you think was a big sticking point in the 70s? Satanic panic. Perfect. You yeah. nailed it. Yeah. So, like, people were like, oh, it's cultists uh, that are just, like, killing cattle and ritual sacrifice. Yeah. Like, they, they, they want their blood or something. Like... It is it is weird though. Like you're like, oh, okay, somebody's draining these cows' blood. Like, what what's the point of that? Um, because an animal can't do that unless it's a chupacabra. True. Maybe hey, maybe we just imported a bunch of chupacabras in the 70s. Yeah, this could be this could be, you know, after uh what Hurricane Katrina, maybe this is where the grunge went. Which <laughs> True. you know, it, that's a throwback. It went to back to the nineteen seventies? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Shit. I <laughs> Uh, when he said after Hurricane Katrina, I was I'm like, so I mean, I, I sorry, guess. every cattle mutilation after Hurricane Katrina, oh, okay. you can attribute to the grunge. I'm very dim-witted. Um, Very good. Uh, 
So yeah, I mean, the 70s, we already have some satanic panic stuff going on. Um, but people are people are starting to also notice with these cattle mutilations that there's not really tracks. Uh, there, there's nothing to re- to say that like somebody or something came up to these cattle and killed them. It's like as if something came from above or or something like that. Yeah. Um. So that's when like when we have UFO sightings at this time and these cattle mutilations, people are beginning to associate these these deaths with UFOs. Um. So ranchers. And and like people, yes. Sorry, want to chime just, in? I just started thinking about like some aliens being like, "Oh no, we're cause, okay." So I got there because I think about like why would aliens need buttholes, uh-huh. uh, cowboy holes? And I started thinking about like you know how um, ambergris, the stuff from whales, oh, is used in making yes. perfume and stuff. So cow buttholes are some sort of like uh, some utility. sort of like used for some sort of like you know uh, luxury product in the skies. So it's like. Oh, we're running low on cow buttholes. We got to go back to Earth. Yeah, they just, yeah, it's a precious resource that they yeah. cord out the asshole of every cow there's, on their planet. There's they, some sort of elasticity that can only be found in a cow's butthole. Jesus. So you travel across the galaxy to get it to make like the perfect like alien scrunchie that or something. Would shit. explain why when humans get abducted by UFOs, their assholes remain intact. Yes. I mean, they get probed. What is with aliens and assholes? Well, See this. This is this is the, the age old question of like, what is it with aliens and assholes, or what is it with people projecting their, their anal desire to have like, something up yeah, their ass? The the the, <laughs> the like the anal fixation onto aliens. Well, we have many stages. We have the anal, the oral, or whatever. The, yeah. This is, I think, a thing in like what psychology. So like, no, they- <laughs> or Freud said it or yeah, something. Yeah. So you either know, psychology or biology, one of the two. They're well, both are. <laughs> I'm just saying, like maybe the people who are talking about you know aliens coming down and being like, oh, I'm gonna put this funny little thing in your ass. They're just, <laughs> and maybe they're just like the, the, the for some reason people who get abducted who have fantasies about UFO abduction are like also really into getting their ass probed. I don't, I don't know. know. It's, I don't know. Do you think the goatsy guy? Uh, was a like an abductee like you think you think he was just like the aliens will not fucking bl- i believe i'll be able to signal my, them with my asshole from the like land on earth like they'll see me from the sky i think that 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 the goatsy guy has a severe fear of mm. being abducted so he's trying to make the asshole entirely un- unusable <laughs> and or un uh like undesirable to aliens. Maybe it's kind of like that yokai that has the eye in its butthole. Mm. So like the alien, like maybe he's like pestered so much by aliens that like they show up and he just runs out of his house nude with his asshole stretched, just like aiming it at them, like trying to get them to go away. Like there's nothing here for you. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but how does cake farts fit in? <laughs> I made myself laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm s- Go ahead. Oh my it's- God. Um, <laughs> Look, sometimes you got to make your own jokes, you know? <laughs> so dumb. Uh, so, uh, by the way, if you're listening to this and you don't know what Goatsy is, just Google Goatsy. Do not. You'll love it. It's super Remember, because cool. here's the thing. This is this is just a very short digression. Yeah. There was a point where people were scared of Googling random shit like yeah. that on the internet because they knew that shock was, sites yeah. were in vogue. Yeah. That is gone now. We, yeah, like, we just do it all. We just look at it all the time anyways no but i mean like there's not like the the sending someone to a prank website is not really a thing anymore like we no one lemon party is dead you can just go on any social media website and see horrors beyond human comprehension i'm pretty sure like tub girls on tiktok or something like yeah they they, they do all of the they did the bus it challenge last week so it's (laughs) what that is i don't either i think it's it's just a name that i've heard someone say uh but like I feel like there was there was a time where there was a vigilance towards hyperlinks. Yeah. That now is is only like people just don't click them at all. And like so if you say just if you don't know what Goatsy is, go and look it up. There are people who are too young to okay. have seen uh, okay. <laughs> to if have you, lived okay. through that let me, era. Let me let me rephrase that. If you're 18 plus years old, Google Goatsy. And that's all it's G-O-A-T-S-E in case you didn't know. Oh my god. You don't even remember so, the link anymore? Goatsy.cx? Yeah, yeah, of course I remember. Okay. Who do you think I am? Or go to lemonparty.org. Put some fucking respect 
on on my whole thing. Yeah, to be <laughs> fair, you do the internet show on our boat on our Patreon, so I guess I should remember that. Oh Jesus. Uh so um so now people are like prowling around trying to protect themselves from UFOs. Um which like I guess leads to people firing at aircraft sometimes. Um Yeah. Like there there were stories, I guess, in the seventies of people like taking shots at aircraft because they were like, well, UFO is coming to get my cattle. Um, so this is all just kind of, you can kind of say that this is the sort of mass hysteria that the Robertson panel was worried about. You know, the panel that was kind of like, we need to put the lid on UFOs because we don't want the populace freaking out. Um, so uh, basically... This leads to a lot of actual, like, legitimate investigations from a lot of organizations, notably uh, FBI, the ATF, Fish and Wildlife was another organization. So these people are, like, called in on these these cases, um, and they become – they end up getting analyzed. So, like, people are, like, analyzing the bodies of these cows that are killed, uh, and apparently – this kind of leads to a consensus that we don't know what's doing this. Hmm. I mean, if you think about it, if you'd like take it at face value, how can you possibly explain that? Yeah, I like, okay. It. I'm, I'm always curious when it comes to this kind of thing where they're like, we don't know what's causing it. Does that mean that they cannot come to a conclusive they methodology? To, correct. Well, or, they, they cannot come to a conclusion of like the culprit, like what, who like they don't know who is doing this or right. what an animal could be doing this okay because like I, I always think about this where where because i okay so le, for for metaphor reasons calling it a ufo that can mean anything that you cannot identify i don't know shit about airplanes so to, mo- to me most things in the sky are, are ufos is this one of those cases where, like, they can tell that their surgical cuts made with some sort sort of object that they can identify, but they just don't know who is doing it so, or or reasoning, or is it that the the cutting and everything doesn't align with anything that we can recognize, so it's entirely unknown? Sorry, let let me let me clarify. The organizations that are investigating, the very official ones, are mm-hmm. saying we have an explanation versus the populace that is saying we don't understand what's going on here and it doesn't make sense and the it doesn't add up. Okay. But they're, they're, they're really just saying like, there is no, like, <clears throat> there's no natural explanation for this. So if it's unnatural, what is it? We don't know. Okay. But like the FBI would come out and basically say, well, these animals have died of natural causes. That is their, that is their line. So they're saying it's they an They cough anim- really hard and their butthole flew Yeah, their out. asshole flew out an entire core like that one guy in the, uh, uh Kung, Kung Pao enter the fist that gets his stomach ripped out. Yeah. Um, but they'll they'll say basically like uh they died from a disease or an animal attack. Uh like scavengers and insects are like eating their organs and blood only appears to be mit- like gone and, and sucked out of their body because it like settles at the at the bottom when they're laying there dead or something mm, like that. Okay. So it, there's and then like the sun will also dry the bodies up. So they, yeah. they have all these like a- explanations. Um, and like blowflies specifically were the explanation for why like parts of the body were like cored out. I remember hearing about that. Yeah. So, um, so that, that those are, they just like tunnel into the body. So it causes like, they this, tunnel like carving in. out. This is really gross. Yeah. But yeah, that's the that, idea. I don't need to no, go any right. d- more, any deeper on like the blowfly. Uh, but that, that, okay. That's the explanation. That's, and, and the one, the explanation that I found kind of fascinating, the one that like I would have not considered is like, well, how do you explain surgical cuts? Yeah. And the official explanation is that when these bodies bloat, they burst and the seam that they burst at will appear like a, like a perfect cut. Huh? So that is interesting. I would have never thought about that either. Me neither, but we're not investigating this with the FBI. So yeah, you know, I'm not a, not a professional cattle mutilation investigator. So that's <clears throat> that's really the best season of NCIS is the cattle mutilation, <laughs> cattle mutilation investigation season. season. Uh, yeah. So uh, basically, some of the investigators kind of pop up and sit, and they're like, "That's all well and good, but you're not investigating the like, quote unquote, genuine cattle mutilation." 
cases. Okay. Uh, which people are, like these, these large scale investigations happen. Uh, they just, they just seem to people to be trying to put, again, put the lid on UFO stuff. Uh, private investigations also don't reveal anything that suggests that there's like an extraterrestrial explanation here. Um, but here's where it gets fucking weird. Okay. And that's not exactly the title of our show. I kind of not exactly. towed around it. You added some emphasis with, with a little curse. There were some state level organizations investigating early on that claimed that they had evidence that cattle killed in this manner. They found evidence of tranquilizers and anticoagulants. Hmm. Uh, there's a newspaper that had reported a Colorado sheriff found supposedly a military style bag that held a scalpel and surgical gloves, as well as a bull's penis. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to be what. Okay, okay, a scalpel. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, what? What? We're, what does the military need a bull dick for? I, it's a. I, I. Well, I don't. I honestly don't know, but. Uh, there is also a new Mexico patrolman uh, and, I guess, retired scientist uh, also claims that they had found these uh, marks on the cattle that you could only see under ultraviolet light and that they also found indications that suggested places where the cattle may have been tied down with rope and had broken bones. Okay. Which... This setup, the way that these ropes were were on like tied to them and where their bones were broken, suggests that maybe these cattle had been airlifted away. Airlifted where? And then put back? Yeah. Okay. So they were taken. So this th would they had to go to the special butthole removal <sighs> facility. Well, the point here is that. There is a suggestion that this is a human-made phenomenon. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Which, I, I'm. It's starting to to come together in my brain. Yeah. That this is. They're basically like the government somewhere in a boardroom decided what can we do to keep making it seem like aliens exist and like stir the pot more. Well. And they decided to just like go out and airlift out cattle and mutilate <laughs> them and put them back. It's not quite that gonzo because it does sound kind of like it's like oh we're gonna fake UFO events. The next logical leap must be we we, we must brutally mutilate cattle. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly that because the. One of the main theories is that when you think about the location where these cattle mutilations tend to happen, uh -huh. where do you think? Uh, like the 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 west, like you're looking in like Colorado, Utah, kind of. People are, the, the theory is essentially that these cattle that were covertly airlifted off, if that's what's happening via the military, they were being tested near these local nuclear test sites. Uh, just to see what the effect had been on the animals in the area. So, like, oh. if you think about like how okay. Skinwalker Ranch, there is there is like a whole conspiracy to Skinwalker Ranch that the paranormal phenomena is not happening, and that there were guards sent there to essentially be like test subjects for like nuclear fallout from the like fifties. Yeah, it's the same thing, but with cattle. Okay, so, so it's like literally... a convenient. It's like more convenient than hiring guards to go stand out in the desert and get nuclear radiation. Yeah, it's okay. So they straight up are, are just like basically having actual dissections of cows to yeah. see the effects of nuclear radiation yes. from these bunkers. Yes. So this this also kind of follows from the whole uh, VS Boas thing. Yep. Where like they have these silent helicopters come in and abduct these cows, kill them and test them and core out parts of their body to get tested, then bring them back and drop them off. And now we also have the FBI who's just like, well, it's blow flies and it's it's this and it's that. Yeah, and so, it, it fits into the UFO craze. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That that makes the I hadn't thought about the nuclear testing part of it, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. And and because like uh, I thought also, it was just the government being like, okay, we gotta do something. We gotta we gotta really freak people out with UFO stuff. It's kill cow. That's a big leap, right? That but yeah, you know, and and if you also think about like V.S. Boas, his whole thing, like his sickness that he describes after his abduction sounds a lot Very like radiation. radiation sickness. Yep. 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 
Um, there was also another theory uh, that comes from Colm Kelleher. You might recognize Why do I that know that name? name? They are a paranormal researcher, and I do believe worked at, worked with people at, um, if I'm remembering correctly, worked with people at Skinwalker Ranch. Okay. Um, but their theory is a little more wacky, but is also more grounded than aliens. And he basically says, uh, maybe it was an attempt to covertly find out just how, like what will happen with the pathogens that cause mad cow disease if it ended up in the country's beef supply. Okay. So they're like that. testing on, on the cows to see what that is all about. Um, so now the question is like, well, people hear about cattle mutilation. The instant association is Nile aliens. Yeah. Is that on purpose? It, it really is like cattle mutilation is in it immediately either, uh, like death core album cover or, yep. um, an alien, thing. alien thing. Yeah. Does the name Linda Moulton Howe re- ring a bell to you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You know who she is then. I, I I don't remember exactly which one she is, but I've I if you give me a little starting, I will remember. I am pretty well familiar with her, uh, because I've watched her in documentaries, and she also pops up on art. She used to go on Art Bell a lot. Is she the one that that uh, that Roswell is like was like a, a Russian craft or whatever, or was um, against? I don't I don't actually know that for sure. Okay, but you'll recognize this because she is the uh, journalist behind the documentary in 1980, A Strange Harvest, which is about the cattle mutilation phenomenon. Which I know that came up in one of our episodes. I definitely remember talking about this in one of them. Um, But but that that was kind of what put her onto the scene of like woo and ufology and stuff. Uh, So she is, you know, here's the thing about Linda Moulton Howe. Uh, she is a firm believer in the extraterrestrial hypothesis. Uh, I think she's still around um, and is still pro alien, pro like all about aliens are the UFOs. Um, uh, so she she's fully in support of that theory. Uh, and so she's like, at one point she actually was like successful enough with this stuff that she got an HBO documentary. Um, okay. Now her popularity with this stuff also got the attention of the air force of special investigations. Oh, good. I'm glad they're in here. So, uh, let's also talk about one of the guys that put me on this entire three part subject. Uh, one of the agents of AFOSI that is Richard Doty. I know that name. Why do I know that name? So I know why you know that name and we'll get to it. Okay. Okay. Richard Doty invites Howe to Kirtland Air Force Base and tells her, hey, guess what? You're right. Aliens exist. The government knows about it. UFOs are real. Aliens are piloting them. Uh, and we have been in contact with them. Okay. This is, a, this is a guy who actually works with the Air Force confirmed. Yeah. And so he, the, oh God, okay. He shows her documents that look very real. Um, and the fact that you're saying that is uh, telling. Talking with her about how we made contact during Roswell, the incident at Roswell. And we have known about the existence of extraterrestrial life since then. And um, they also have a survivor of the Roswell crash here on planet Earth working with the government. Interesting. Okay. Furthermore. He tells her that these aliens have provided evidence that the aliens visiting Earth had genetically engineered humanity from the beginning and that people like Jesus Christ, spiritual leaders, were sent to guide us on our path through human evolution. Okay. Yep. This is in this. This is. This is so fucking insane, man. Uh, So. Dodie strings her along, saying, I'll get you footage. I'm going to show you photos and footage of UFO crashes, landings, aliens, 
dead and alive. What about what about an alien autopsy? That that VHS that was going around. Does, I don't think do I know what you're talking about. I don't think that's one of the things, but yeah. that's that's what he's promising is all this this stuff. Um, and he even tells her that he could potentially get her a meeting with the alien that they recovered from Roswell. Um, now here's the thing that never happened. Okay. She never met an alien. He never followed through on any of the, any of these promises, but he, but he did tell her these things. Like he did this tell was her all, these okay. things. Uh, and she, she'll still, t- she still says it to this day that that's what was told to her and shown to her. Yeah. Um, and Hey, makes sense. And how's HBO project gets canceled. Fuck. Because she couldn't follow through on, on bringing this cool footage that was promised to her. So Dodie, I guess will deny that this happened. He, he denies that he told her these things. Um, he, but there's a huge problem with Dodie because the more you hear him talk about things and the more official statements you read from him and things that he has said at meetings, at, at, at all this stuff, impossible to trust what he says. Yeah, makes sense. He is paid to be a fucking liar. Um, he, but we can't, like I said, we can confirm he was an agent of the AFOSI. Uh, that is due to the fact that uh, at basically he had shared these falsified documents uh, that Howe had described with other ufologists, also encouraging them to believe everything that I just outlined. Mm-hmm. However crazy it sounds. So let's for a moment go back to the Roswell incident. Uh, while Roswell had already gone down decades before, it wasn't the huge hit that it is today. Uh, I actually didn't know this, but it wasn't that much of a media sensation at the time when it originally happened. They People had actually pretty well accepted the story that was put out, which was that, oh, it, it's, you know, first we get the, the redacted story, the one that they pulled back about mm-hmm. a recovered, um, cr- like, a craft, disc craft. Um, but then, so that retraction happens and they put out, it's, you know, the weather balloon stuff or whatever. Right. People, people believe it because we are literally, I think two weeks after the sighting of, um, um, uh, Kenneth Arnold. Mm -hmm. So this is before UFO shit starts to get real crazy. Yeah. Like it's it's at the very start. Yeah. Um, so yeah, not much of a media sensation at all until 1979, uh, when a guy, a, a, a high school teacher by the name of William Moore, uh, helped kind of turn it into the UFO mythology that it is today. So Moore was a French and Russian teacher for over 10 years in Pennsylvania before he ends up living in Minnesota where he would teach English at a uh, just at a high school. And in his free time, his whole thing was writing and he was especially interested in UFOs, so he would write about UFOs. Um he would do some investigative pieces at the start for uh, the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena, or NICAP. Um, and this helped, this ended up, this led more to being one of the co authors on the book, The Philadelphia Experiment in 1978. Um, which the thing about that is like he is writing a book about another r- piece of writing that years later would come out is complete bunk. We, we did the Philadelphia experiment on this show really early. Yeah. No, we actually did it with Garrett like a couple months back. Didn't we? Oh, I think, I I think think I was confusing two different things. Yep. You're Philadelphia experiment being the, the ship that supposedly teleported across the United States. Yeah. Uh, using like recovered UFO technology or whatever. Basically that gets revealed to be a hoax later on, but this guy co-authored a book about it. Um, and that's kind of like what puts him on the map. Uh, so yeah, it it just, it's relying on this sort of bunk report, these like eyewitness reports. Um, and, uh, he kind of, he's also the one that sort of reaches this conclusion of like, well, this experimental technology that helped teleport the ship, uh, uh, is, is like secret government tech, maybe alien. Um, but he's just, this establishes him, even though we know what we know about the Philadelphia experiment. Right. Um, so he is out promoing his book around the country 
when he meets Stanton Friedman, uh, who was once a nuclear physicist, uh, but he ended up kind of pivoting towards uh, ufology. And uh, his his thing is, I guess, you know those guys who just kind of like try to take a quote-unquote scientific approach to UFOs? Yeah. Um, uh, so like on the one hand, he seems very invested in like getting to the bottom of UFO stuff. On the other hand, like a lot of UFO people, very credulous. Uh, a lot of stuff has been criticized for this guy. So, but Moore and Friedman end up working together and creating essentially the Roswell myth. Moore ends up going on another promo circuit with a second book called uh, the Roswell incident. And while he's doing this, this promotional tour, he gets a phone call from a person claiming to be government intelligence and that they had chosen more to be the person to receive some classified UFO information and that they want that information to be disseminated to the public. Uh, now this would lead more to reading with our friend Richard Doty. Fantastic. So in the 1980s, Doty would continue this thing where he is just telling he's telling more all this crazy shit and all of Moore's associates in the UFO community about all this crazy evidence of UFOs and aliens exact same thing he did to Linda Moulton Howe at the around around the same time actually uh now Doty had originally asked how that she only would include this information in her movies in her movie but for more he had something else to ask of him he basically was like in exchange for this information i'm going to give you i want you to essentially spy on other ufologists i will let you be privy to classified info about aliens he's telling this to a ufologist Uh uh-huh I will let you be privy to that info if you spy on them. And furthermore, if you feed them false information. Which is, uh, this is wild because he's already being fed false information to then uh, to barter with him to get the guy to spread false information to other UFOs. This is, look, these guys are ahead of their time. These guys know yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. Richard Doty is uh, good Real, at, at stirring the yeah. fucking pot. It's it's really something else. So Moore agrees to this. Uh, and so for years, he's just, he, you know, he gives talks. He's, you know, writing. He's on these circuits. And um, he believes that he is also at the same time collecting this genuine evidence of the alien phenomenon from Doty. Um, and this leads to the big first target for Moore. Okay. Moore gets with a guy named Paul Benowitz. Okay. Yep. And you are going to, I think, have a fanboy moment when you find out who Benowitz is. I think I remember. I think I know the name. You know the name, definitely. Um, So he's feeding Benowitz these, these fake things. So... Uh, here's all right. The timeline of this is a little weird, but, but let me just explain in Vegas in 1989 years after everything more would confess to the UFO community about what he's done. Uh, he says, quote, I would play the disinformation game and you can find, I watched in the Mirage men. That's about all this. I've mentioned this before. If you like what I'm talking about here, check that documentary out buy the book if you can. Um, You in the documentary see him do this confession speech and the crowd is booing and jeering. Oh, I bet. Uh, And he says, quote, uh, uh, he says, quote, get my hands dirty just often enough to lead those directing the process into believing that I was doing exactly what they wanted me to do and all the while continuing to burrow my way into the matrix so as to learn as much possible possible about who was directing it and why. Surprise, surprise, this confession ends his career as a ufologist. Oh, 100%. Um, no, no one will fucking talk to you after that. And it seems almost like Moore is sort of like hoping that this confession would be revelatory for the UFO community. 
Yeah. But instead, he is completely ostracized. Yeah, I mean, because he's pitching it as, like, I did just enough to keep getting the, to to really keep getting more and more from the government. So I I wasn't doing, I look, I was doing as little harm to you guys as possible to get us all this information, and that information is also bullshit. Yeah. So (laughs) he's over, but not before him and Richard Doty do some serious fucking damage to a ufologist. And this is Paul Benowitz. So we're going to talk about Paul Benowitz now. Uh, in 1969, uh, he's pursuing his PhD in physics and he starts a successful tech company in New Mexico that's called Thunder Scientific, which I guess they manufactured devices for humidity gauging and temperature gauging for the Air Force and NASA. Okay. So don't look him up. I'm not. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, cause I think the reveal is going to be fun for me. <laughs> At least you're good. I, I, I was checking. Uh, look, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, but I was checking a notification. That's okay. That's okay. I don't look, I don't care if you check notifications. I get it. I just don't want you Googling Paul Benowitz and spoiling my big fun surprise. I want to unwrap him for you. I, I will not. I, I have the vague recollection of a name of, of like, I know the name is important, but we'll get, we'll and the thing is, is, you know, this guy for like a conspiracy thing, but this is an entire aspect of him that we did not touch when we discussed him i think i'm i think he might have been in dark mission but we'll see I'll, i'm gonna don't don't okay. don't respond okay just keep going okay so uh he was pretty he was a frequent flyer with the military uh and he he ended up settling down and and living near kirtland air force base uh he was also a pilot he had service he had served in the coast guard uh, and he has respect for his fellow officials from the military um, and especially the people at Kirtland. Uh, he was, a, a, by most accounts, a, a nice man, a family man. He liked playing guitar, uh, just generally pretty normal guy. Um, but he also, of course, has that itch for learning about UFOs. Yeah. Um he was actually a member of an organization called the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization, or APRO. And he would actually get consulted through this organization as a scientific expert. Um, and in 1979, his, his interest in UFOs turns into an unhealthy obsession. So in April of that year, a former astronaut and now senator named uh, Harrison Schmidt uh, has a news conference about cattle mutilations that are kind of sweeping around New Mexico. And Paul Benowitz is in the audience and he was fully convinced that cattle mutilations were the work of extraterrestrials visiting earth. And he ends up kind of getting chummy with some of the initial investigators at the cattle mutilation at the forefront of the cattle mutilation thing. Yeah. At the cattle mutilation, cattle mutilation at the cattle, convention. Yeah, at the cattle mutilation convention. Cattle We're con. all here because we love to do this to cattle. Camu con. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, but at this same uh, presentation, we've got people from the FBI and the AFOSI. And um, it's theorized that maybe this is the first time that he was noticed by AFOSI, um, but we don't know for sure. Okay. So later on that year, uh, Benowitz is out watching the stars on his deck, just kind of chilling when he notices strange lights of various colors hovering and swooping around the uh, nearby Manzano Mountains that are within Kirtland Air Force Base. So Benowitz would go every night from then on onto his deck to watch he would set up a surveillance like station essentially uh telephoto cameras aimed at this military installation and uh he's just attempting to see if he can get anything that's happening out there on film so to him this is not him spying on military activity this is trying to capture the ufo phenomenon yeah um they would like According to his, I think the military might disagree, but <laughs> right, you know, right. Well, according to his, you know, his account of it, these things could travel distances almost instantaneously. They were very strange, and they were clearly extraterrestrial to him. Um, so over the next year, he starts, you know, aiming more instruments at them, including electromagnetic pulses, 
like things that he could detect electromagnetic pulses from. Did he ever just get a gun and just like, no, I don't think he like fired at him. <laughs> See, this is like a scientist guy. This isn't yeah. like a rancher trying to figure and out hey, what's killing scientific, his cows. Scientific, scientific, part of the scientific method is I, seeing how bullets was, work no, on No, you're right. I'm, I wasn't, I'm not trying to say you couldn't scientifically fire a gun at a UFO. I'm just saying that that wasn't his method. Look, I'm um, a fan of big science. I, <laughs> me too. Big dude. caliber. I fucking love science. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, this is also the area where the Manzano weapons storage complex is, uh, which is the United States largest underground stockpile of nuclear, nuclear weapons at this time. Jesus. Okay. Um, so probably not something they want people taking a bunch of like readings and pictures and photos and fucking. Yes. And he also, and, but the thing is his intentions here are like, oh my God, aliens are trying to interfere with this site. Yeah. I'm going to tell the Air Force and the military about this. Uh, so innocent. So so sweet. So innocent. Now, he does begin to get a bit paranoid. Yeah. Uh, which is a sign of things to come. Uh, he's He's not... He's not fully unwell, but psychologically, he's he's got some issues. Um... And so in, in the mid 1980s, while he's still collecting all this, what he believes to be UFO evidence, um, one of the contacts from the mutil cattle mutilation investigation tells him about a woman named Myrna Hansen. And Hansen claimed that she had had an abductee experience with aliens. Um, and Benowitz brings Hansen over to his house and Hansen brings her son, uh, but she's having trouble remembering the event well. And so ben Benowitz makes the next logical step in a ufology. Hypnotic regression? He calls in somebody to help her with hypnotic regression. A, psych a psychologist, an alien contactee researcher. This is another name you should recognize. I haven't forgotten this name. And every time I hear it, it makes me laugh. This is a guy named Leo Sprinkle. I vaguely remember that as well. Yeah. yeah. So Sprinkle's here to, to come and perform hypnotic regression. Um, there's some question of his credibility, of course, of course. and, and yeah. just the idea of hypnotic regression is questionable too. But basically Hansen ends up supposedly recovering this memory of being taken to an underground alien base. And there she is shown that there are human body parts and vats and they implant her with a device that would allow the aliens that had abducted her to basically listen to her thoughts. Okay. Now, Benowitz, hearing all this and, and experiencing all this, uh, he's, he's, not, he's now getting worse. So, yeah, oddly enough, that didn't help him. No, him hearing that this is a thing going on does, does not help at all. Uh, and so, uh, Sprinkle, I guess, comes to see Benowitz uh, later on that summer of, what did I say, the mid-1980s, and um, he finds him, he finds Benowitz holding a gun and uh, terrified that aliens are going to monitor his home and could potentially attack. Okay. So Benowitz is already sort of about to start spiraling. There is something going on and it's not good. Uh, it's, it's something. It, and this whole hypnotic regression thing with Myrna Hansen seems to have really triggered it. Um, and it's hard to say exactly what happened. So October of 1980 is when he finally goes and tells Kirtland air force base about his investigations into the UFOs that he's been watching. Now, does he actually get the whole sentence out before they raid his house or do they, they just cut I, him off immediately? I, I, I don't know the details fair, but I can tell you that after what he tells them, the AFOSI send Rick Doty to his house to interview him. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the, Rick Doty is the last man on earth this guy needs to talk to. Yeah. He needs He's a therapist, gonna, man. Rick, Rick Doty's going to send this guy off the fucking edge. Yep. Oh, this is a... 
this is yep. <laughs> yeah, you I mean, you spoiled it, but yep. So, um the, so uh what's so what's extra insane about this to me is after Benowitz speaks with Doty, he is then granted audience with the head of every department at Kirtland Air Force Base. And Why? he tells he tells them all of his evidence and all of his theories. Okay. And presumably they would have been like, this is a mentally unwell man. This is a man who needs help, but no. And then just like been like, okay, time for to get you to the next time department. Time to take head. you to therapy. Okay. Time to k- take you to a psychologist. But no, basically, uh, if they had just told him, hey, you are surveilling classified activities uh, and we need you to not do that. This man would still be alive. Maybe he things would be okay. I, I'm assuming this man died. I'm just I don't know if it was by his well, own hand or something else, but well, we will we'll we'll keep talking. So yeah. Air Force Intelligence at Kirtland, um, and while we can't confirm for sure, some say possibly the NSA, people from the NSA, uh they encourage him to continue his research. They say, Hey, keep doing your thing and report it back to us. This is important work you're doing. God damn it. Uh, They had believed that Benowitz had probably picked up on experimental signals that they had been testing in the Kirtland Air Force area, um, and they wanted to figure out how he had done it. Uh, And the AFOSI believed that it is possible he captured footage of experimental aircraft while he was trying to film UFOs around the mountains. Um, Or... Even worse still, it's possible they just saw that Benowitz was a good opportunity to do do a heckin' disinfo. Yeah. <laughs> I like the I I I both I find this stuff fascinating, but anytime the government's just like, oh, this person is in severe need of help, let's just keep pushing them. Let's yeah. It it's so it makes well, my skin. And crawl. to me, it's just to, to them, it's like well, we want ufologists to spread this disinformation among themselves. Uh, it's extremely useful for us for them to be completely confused about what's going on. Yeah. Um, and damn the consequences. So like, this is a good opportunity. Yeah. So uh, Rick Doty is stationed at Kirtland for a year at this point. Um, and he's, you know, he's. this is also when he's still doing his, his disinfo campaign with all the other people I described before. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, the, the first piece of evidence that Moore had been provided by, not by Doty, but by Moore's anonymous contact that I mentioned earlier, Mm -hmm. this is a person that would be known only as Falcon. And they claim to be working on a thing called project silver sky that mentioned the recovery of a UFO. This was later revealed to be fake. Of course. And, uh, at when Moore first met with Doty, uh, he kind of confronted AFOSI about the forged bullshit documents and things and, and this contact. Um, now, I guess Doty told him that it was only a test and Moore had passed, <laughs> which is insane. I mean, yeah, but that's, that's such the game, though. Like, if they figure out that you're on to some bullshit to say, look, we were, we were just making sure that you were trustworthy and that we could, you had a head on your shoulders. Cause then we're going to give you the real shit and it would, it would be too much for you if you didn't pass this test. It's, so, well, this is, um, this is also like after he has this meeting with Dodie, this is when he strikes up the bar. Doty strikes up the bargain with him to start spreading misin- misinformation and stuff. And, um, then in November, uh, only a week after Benowitz had gone to Kirtland Air Force Base and told everybody all that, that shit, mm-hmm. uh, Moore was also taken to Kirtland and shown a document that was top secret. It had analysis of Benowitz's footage on it. And there was some vague mention to something called Project Aquarius. I have read about Project Aquarius. Which one is Project Aquarius? Fuck. Moore was tasked by the AFOSI and I, I think Doty to become friends with Benowitz. Um, and because Bill Moore is a, pr- at the time, pretty well known ufologist, he is the guy who wrote the book on Roswell and, and Philadelphia and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and so 
it's not hard for them to get along. Do, uh, uh, Benowitz and Moore kind of strike up a friendship. And Doty provides Moore with a document that was very similar to the one that he had been shown and is like, hey, show this to Benowitz. Um, now, this document had some extra fluff in it. It also mentioned, get this, it mentioned a group in this version of the document called MJ-12. Okay, hello. Hi, Majestic 12. How are you doing? And Majestic 12 also had exclusive access to the results of this Project Aquarius. And the documents basically- That's where I've heard Project were, Aquarius. Okay. They're, they're pushing Benowitz further. Like, these documents are just making him feel more legitimized. Um, and they kind of also suggest that the Air Force, NASA, and even higher up, uh, these some secretive authority were interested in what he was doing in his work on these UFOs. Okay. So Benowitz then goes public and he starts to tell UFO organizations and other ufologists all about what he has been investigating, evidence that he has found, all of his conclusions, um, and it it's disseminating. Um, so on the other hand, Bill Moore, uh, Bill Moore, so like, Bill Moore, I guess, was not quite as trusting as Benowitz was, but Benowitz is also a little mentally unstable and getting handed all this crazy shit on a silver platter. Yeah. Moore is the one who's being, like, asked to specifically lie to the UFO community. Um, but he nonetheless ends up being a tool for them. So Moore learns about this Project Aquarius and the Majestic 12 uh, from these documents that were provided by Rick Doty. And then the mythos kind of develops from there. Um, it kind of, it be, I guess, becomes a part of a fiction book that Moore worked on for, like, years. And he believes that Aquarius was a real UFO program that had been buried super deep in secrecy um, to the point just because it could lead to genuine alien contact. And um, Project Blue Book and the Majestic 12 were kind of, like, fronts for this project. Okay. Uh, or sorry, Blue Book is a front for this project. Majestic 12 is the panel of secret people who are overseeing all of this this stuff from Project Blue Book all the way to Aquarius and, and all this stuff. Um, so uh, there's just a slew of things in these documents. Like th these are long established, uh, wild, wild documents. Um, crashes of like information about crashes at Roswell, recovered alien corpses, the classic stuff. Um, and we also get information that I guess three extraterrestrial species are visiting Earth. There is a, a benevolent one, one that wants to exploit our resources, and then the third would be the greys, and they're the ones who are doing the cattle mutilation and abductions, and their entire thing is just harvesting genetic material. So those are the evil greys. Okay. Yeah, so this is the stuff that's coming through this Majestic 12 Project Aquarius documents that, that Benowitz and, and uh, more have. Um, we also talked about essentially the ancient aliens theory being confirmed by these documents. Yep. Um, and and <laughs> they make, what's really funny is they make mention not just Christ as being one of the people planted on earth to influence us, but Muhammad and Hitler. Muhammad right. makes sense. Hitler's a little bit of a left field play by Look, the Greys or whoever. They tried to give us positive reinforcement and it wasn't working. So they so decided they to, to go the us. opposite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, Jesus. So it's, uh, um, this is the same stuff that would also go to Linda Milton Howe. And um, Doty, it's believed, may have been encouraging more to publish more of this stuff in his books as nonfiction, even though more, I think has this thing where he's like writing nonfiction books as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's almost like they were like, Hey, that's good. But can you like pretend it's all real? So that, yeah. So that UFO people think it's real. Um, uh, now Doty of course had openly admitted to more that the Aquarius documents were fake. Uh, but he wanted to, I guess present like more wanted to present the Aquarius information like stuff in there as nonfiction for some reason. Okay. Um, and 
his writing partner like counters him and is like, we can't do that. Like we need to present it as fictionalized because we don't want to like, we have absolutely no evidence of these claims whatsoever. Right. Yeah. Like they can't back it up because yeah, the government won't give them even those falsified documents. So from there, more then starts disseminating documents that would like confirm the existence of the majestic 12. Um, like the, you, there's all kinds of these things that tie into the majestic 12 you can go listen to our majestic 12 episode if you want to learn more. But basically he starts talking about it and putting it, in like disseminating more documents that I'm guessing came from Doty. So at this point we can say like, we don't know how much more was involved with all of the hoaxing stuff, but regardless, he serves as this very important tool for the AFOSI. Um, it's possible that he disbelieved almost everything they told him, but we, it's, it's hard to say. Yeah. Um, but he definitely doesn't seem to believe the Aquarius myth. Um, so, uh, he's doing all this because he thinks he's going to get the actual disclosure from the government that is using him. Um, and uh, what's insane about this is these are things that are kind of establishing stories for almost all of ufology in the United States. Um, and you can trace it back to the Air Force. All right. I mean, that... You can trace these major stories back to the Air Force feeding a couple of different ufologists bullshit. It makes some sense. Like, it, it's, it is so, it all had to come from somewhere, especially when it started to get, we, we've talked a lot about how UFO cases tended to get so homogenous after a while. Like, they started to all follow the same types of, uh, of, of procedure. Like, the, yeah. the, the same thing would happen and it would be reported over and over. So it makes sense that the reason that is is because it was when the UFO stuff really started to blossom and it was because the the government was making this fake program yep. that was pushing the story. So the, the story is whatever they came up with and that is why it became the de facto story for a UFO encounter. Yeah. That's so, – it makes so much sense. So for Benowitz, this is all confirmation. He has confirmed their malevolent aliens that are, like, going to attack him or attacking the base, want our nuclear stuff, all confirmed. Uh, and he also now believes Myrna Hansen's story 100% that she had been tagged by these aliens. Um, and he thinks that's what he's filming from his deck. Um, now, this is, like, Doty and the AO, AO, AFOSI – and possibly the NSA are all now very aware that this is like driving Benowitz crazy. Um, and, uh, so they, they kick things up another notch. Uh, they send him a new computer supposedly delivered to Benowitz directly by former blue book member, main man on campus, J Allen Hynek. Really? Supposedly. Not confirmed, but supposedly. <laughs> Dropped him off with the computer. And they give him a computer that has a program on it that he claims is going to help him decode alien signals. They set up a vacant house across the street that were that was built to basically beam signals into his reception arrays. And these tra like basically these transmissions of the from the extraterrestrials would suddenly become clear and he would be able to confirm his his suspicions of what he's picking up. This is so intense to just to like drive this, this UFO guy, just, uh, just mad. Like they, they're really trying they, to drive this guy insane. They're trying to fuck him up. They, he would get messages like our race is dying on the home planet. Women, uh, women of the earth are needed and military of us delivered embryos. Uh, so yeah, again, all stuff that comes still up in modern UFO lore. Yeah. So he still has no clue that this is all a setup, a psyop against him. Um, and he has, no, he just fully is bought into all of it. Um, <laughs> this is really the story of the gov of the air force just saying, fuck this one guy. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Based on UFO sightings and the cattle mutilation stuff that had been going on, he concluded that the underground base that Hanson told him about in her hypnotic regression was, uh, beneath Archuleta Mesa near Dulce, New Mexico. Hi, Dulce Base. Hello. So, 
we don't know whether that's where they were trying to direct him, but that's where he ended up. Um, and Rick Doty claims that basically he encourages this belief uh, in Benowitz that there is something going on at Dulce Base. And that is where we talked about Paul Benowitz. Yeah, okay. He came up in Dulce Base. I love it. So um, the Air Force, I guess, begins hauling out old equipment uh, out to Archuleta Mesa, uh, you know, old vehicles and pieces of technology. Um, and it, basically it had begun to appear that s- some sort of complex was built into the side of a mountain there. Um, and I guess Kirtland sent special forces to stand around and pretend to guard something and that the local army was also incentivized to use the mountain for their training exercises. So really just try to keep act- activity happening here for, okay. Yeah. So they cleared Bush for helicopter landings. They set up, they just set up all this shit and it's because Benowitz is going to go and investigate this place. How many millions of dollars were spent just to drive this one man crazy? I don't know. I feel like they're just kind of like shuffling things around and not spending too much money on it. But maybe, maybe it's, it, you know what, given our government, it could very easily be in the millions to, to just do this. Um, uh, so, but, but you're right. It is a, like a weird amount of shit and effort to, and money to, to do this to this UFO guy. Um, so the late 1980s, uh, both Moore and Doty are admitting to their psyop against Benowitz, uh, they're they're basically claiming that that's when they stopped doing it. Uh, and Benowitz has completely spiraled. Uh, he doesn't sleep anymore. He believes aliens are coming into his bedroom and drugging him. Uh, he talks about waking up in his car in the middle of the night and can't remember how he got there. Uh, he starts to accuse his wife of being under alien control. He ends up barricading himself in his house at one point, and it reaches such a fever pitch that his family has him committed. Yeah, okay. Uh, Moore and Doty would later tell interviewers that they considered Benowitz a friend. They claimed that they tried to caution him about pursuing all this, um, and they could see how it was affecting his mental health, but we don't know if that's true. Yeah, I I say fuck this, man. Um, Doty, not, not Benowitz. These people are all directly responsible for what happened to Paul Benowitz. Um, we don't know for sure if the NSA was involved, but it's a big part of the theory. Yeah. Let's just throw them in for good measure because yeah. they're, they're fucking evil too. Yeah. Um, but the thing is here, here's what, here's what we know about Doty because we can confirm his connections to these things. Uh, he joined the air force in 1968. He was at, in basic training in Texas at Lackland AFB and then acted as service security at Shepard AFB before he ends up getting shipped out to Vietnam. Uh, and then post-war, Doty ends up at McCord Air Base in Washington, um, spends some time in West Germany, and then comes back to the United States. He's at Ellsworth Base in South Dakota, and it's at this time a hoax report about a UFO encounter at this base gets sent to the National Enquirer, and this leads some people who have investigated this whole story to think that Doty got into the disinformation get- campaign through the AFOSI at this point. Okay. Makes sense. So th- this all leaves us being like, well, what, why, why, why did this happen? Well, the, the very simple conclusion is that Benowitz had seen classified activity at Kirtland Air Force Base. Uh, the, presumably the electromagnetic pulses that he had picked up, that was coming from Sandia National Laboratories where they were actually generating EMPs that such as would occur in a nuclear explosion to test how the radiation hardening processes uh, had basically protected these electronic systems and aircraft. Okay. We so know because, that is- because he saw this one thing, they were like, we're going to fill his brain with so much other shit that no one will ever believe the, the like one real thing he saw. Yeah. And a lot of his other sightings were attributed to uh, helicopter activity, which like, yeah. if that also follows with the other stuff we talked about, there's these like silent helicopters that are weird that, yeah. So that, that could be that. Um, and this is also like, this ties in with like the site, supposedly sightings of these weird helicopters at cattle mutilation events. Um, so it, it's all just kind of suggesting that silent copters, secret technology, things that he wasn't meant to see, but none of them extraterrestrial. Um, we have 
stealth helicopters with noise reduction technology that have been developed for since the 60s. Uh, and we've got some serious jumps and leaps in that area of, of technology with that stuff. So it would be, I think, reasonable to think that maybe we had that technology running around and we just didn't know about it until years later. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so it is kind of insane to be like, they just wanted to fuck with this one guy this intensely. Um, he was, you know, of course the guy who came to them with his, his theories and his, his evidence. Um, but this is how it supposedly all went down. They could have arrested him. You know, like if yeah. he came and was like, I saw this and I think it's this, but they know it's secret, you know, active. They could have just arrested him. Um, they could like, there's like literally an espionage act from world war one that they could have arrested him under. Yeah. But instead they, but were, instead they were deep into the disinformation era and they just decided to really weaponize yes, every tool they had against this one guy suggests that they have a vested interest in making sure that false information is disseminated among UFO groups. Mm hmm. So I have a bit more here, but, but the conclusion is poor Paul Benowitz was the subject of a direct psyop by the United States government because they knew they could fuck with his UFO beliefs. Jesus. There's a whole thing here too about how like, you know, remember project Serpo? Yeah. I do. There is, there's a whole thing here where, um, people are like pretty goddamn certain that Doty was also behind project Serpo and the dissemination of that story, uh, which I think that was in what the nineties it had to be because it's in the nineties and he, and they basically were able to trace an IP address to where these anonymous messages about project Serpo were coming from the email. Yeah. Uh, and they were able to trace an IP that eventually led people to Doty. Yeah. So Project Serpo was with like the the Zeta Reticuli yep, exchange the Zeta program. Reticuli exchange program. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I the the fact of the matter is all the things that we've talked about here, why would the government do this? It's still not fully clear to me. It's still a conspiracy theory, but the Paul Benowitz story is it fucked with me. Yeah. It's it, it's, it's dark as me. shit. It's, it's really crazy. Like we've made um, our jokes, but goddamn. Yeah, it's it's fucked up. And it's, it's the government targeting one guy. Yeah, it's it's something else, man. And I, I really want to continue this topic in a more individual capacity and in a more encapsulated thing. But that is the overall thing. Yeah, that is the overall story of UFO disinformation. Like I said, if you want to learn more about this, I highly recommend checking out Mirage Men. I also had to kind of go to another podcast uh, to... Kind of because, like, I didn't find a lot of people getting deeply into the details about, um, about Mirage Men. I didn't, I don't have the book, unfortunately, and I don't have time, but there's a podcast called Historical uh, Blindness that did a multi part series on, on this story that cool is where I got a lot of my core information from, but I guess we didn't, it gets weird spin on it. So, um, shouts out, check that stuff out, Nile. Yes, we have to. Do a big question. Yep. So, Niall, um, cattle mutilation, that was a whole flap with uh, UFOs. What's the next big animal mutilation that's going to be, like, the new hit thing with UFOs? I mean, it's too <laughs> on brand to talk about just, like, dogs. Like, that, that's no, we too, can't. we can't, like, because that's already such I don't a even, thing. I, I, won't, I don't want that at all. No. I mean, I don't want any animals. To, you know what? Let me let me go ahead and up front and say I don't want any. I, I walked myself yeah, into you, a fucking you really trap made, here. You made an animal cruelty <laughs> big question <laughs> here. Okay. Um. Um. But I was going to say drop kicking frogs. Okay. I think that's, that's like. That's the new. That, that's whimsical enough that it doesn't, it's not entirely dark. Um. Uh, can I tell you my answer real quick? Yeah. Mine's going to be the most villainous animal of them all, man. <laughs> Fair. What are they going to do? What are they? Are, are they they're just going to. They, so aliens are going to start mutilating. They're going to start coring people's assholes. Okay. Enough I of mean, this probing shit. We're taking them out. Yeah. To be we're fair, we're taking them on the go. We're. <laughs> yeah. We finally found a way to make them with a, make make man's butthole work. So, a whole, a fucking <laughs> get going. We're going to take this on. Maybe. No, it's way too that that's I don't have a way into that. Anyway. Something funny. 
No, not well, maybe, but it it was like, do you ever have a thing that's like a quarter of an idea and you just can't? I was trying yep. to figure out a way to make aliens responsible for bad dragon <laughs> as like some sort of oh, preparation. Okay. Well, yeah, they're for, like they're pouring like like a cast into people's assholes and, and they're coming back like, with the nicest, the most perfectly fitting dildos of all time. And like, there's something inside of it that prepares the human anus for alien, right. re- uh, uh, like uh, alien harvesting. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to that hitting the market next year. <laughs> So it's like the ovipositor ones, yeah. but it it, uh, it it lets you gets you real ready for alien probing. Oh, yeah. oh man. Well, Nile, I realize that was a big, a fast big question, but I think it's time to move on to some. Yeah, business. we've got we've got uh, unfortunately busy things going on. So so if you want to find us on the internet, you can find us a couple different places. If you want to follow us on Twitter, go to i at igw podcast. You can follow us on facebook.com slash it gets weird podcast. And we're on all your favorite podcatchers from Stitcher to Google Play to Apple Podcasts or Spotify. If you listen to podcasts somewhere, look up It Gets Weird and we're probably there. Twitch.tv slash It Gets Weird. We stream sometimes. Go check it out. Subscribe to us. I swear to God, one day I'll get that that thing properly set up so it's more of a your typical Twitch channel with all kinds of stuff going on. I just Life is so fucking busy. It's yeah. hard to run a podcast when life is this busy. Yeah, um, we both have been moving in, in over the last like it. It's yeah, it's fucking it's tough. It's wild right now. And uh, it gets weird. Podcast at gmail dot com. Email us. Uh, we would love to hear what you think. Which part of the body do you think they should be coring out next? And, and what animal? And what animal? Pref- but I still am sticking to the whole man thing. Yeah. Somebody core life, out a giant thigh. size man thing. A giant size man thing. That's right. Uh, and if you want to support us in these busy trying times, please, please do so. We have patreon.com slash it gets weird. We have a $2 tier and a $5 tier. At the $2 tier, you get access to It Gets Weird TV, a show where we watch weird television. We're currently starting the X Files, uh, and we talk about it and have a good time. And I'm a big fan of the X Files, not as a big fan. So, Check it out. At the five dollar tier, we get you get access to It Gets Weird TV plus a bonus show on the off weeks of It Gets Weird TV. So you're getting bonus content every single week. Whether you donate to two dollar tier or the five dollar tier, you get access to our mainline episode two days early on Friday instead of Sunday, and you get access to our Discord where we're chatting about stuff all the time, all kinds of weird stuff with our weirdos. It's great. We also have one dollar tier that's just a tip. You don't get anything out of it. You're just saying, "Hey, I love your show. Here's a tip. Thank you for doing what you're doing." If you can't donate, please tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell your congress all about it gets weird podcast yes that is the end of a part a three-parter nile yeah it's Jesus always uh, it always feels like a marathon ending ending a multi-part episode yeah, certainly for me so all right all right all you weirdos thank you all for listening keep telling all your friends enemies congressmen all about it gets weird especially those new democrats that were just put in office <laughs> uh to keep the that red wave back so thank you all for listening this has been it gets weird and i've been nile and i'm kyle signing out